time to talk about Skullgirls. <laughs> yeah, Skullgirls is a game that has been eluding me for many, many years now. Since practically the first Encore game was announced. Never got a chance to play it until like, literally I got my Switch like December last year and that was like pretty much the first time I got to try because I just bought the game. Now I could just bought the game on my PS4. Don't know why I didn't. I guess I was just a spur of the moment thing. I was already at a library. They already had Wi-Fi. I already had money on hand. I was like, well, F it. I might as well just buy Skullgirls while I'm here on my Switch. Plus, hey, portability. Even though I really don't take my Switch portably. <laughs> I just stay at the house, so it kind of doesn't matter what I do with this damn thing. But hey, Skullgirls. <laughs> well, yeah, Skullgirls is a pretty damn good fun game. I wish I was a lot better at it because, goddamn, this game is very hard on me. I don't know. May may maybe it's just like, maybe it's because I just suck at fighting games, but it just feels very hard to me. Like, the game is really cool. I like the whole hand-drawn, like, sprites. Like, honestly, they just, they're just so damn smooth. I can understand why there's so little characters in this game. And I can understand why it took so long to get to this point. Because those hand-drawn sprites ain't cheap, man. God damn. On top of a bunch of other content, like art and colors and stuff like that. This game is full of stuff. I like it. You know, you get your own story mode. You get your own arcade mode. And I, I, I feel like I don't really have any complaints with this game. The, I feel like the, my major thing in the game is this difficulty, right? Like, okay, let's say I just got bored, right? I got bored, it went straight into a CPU quick match just for the hell of it. For whatever reason, the CPU quick matches, I don't know if it's just a Switch version, I don't know if it's like the other versions, but holy hell, for whatever reason, the CPUs, no matter how low you drop them, are still hard. Like, I, I just did it for the fun of it, you know? I just went to the CPU quick match, just got, you know, got super bored. I was like, yeah, I might as well just fight these CPUs for a bit because I got nothing better to do. Plus, I don't fight online anyway, so I might as well just, you know, just throw my Switch up on it. Um, you know, just fight a quick CPU match. For whatever godforsaken reason, the actual goddamn uh, CPUs are just, like, not fun to fight at all. I'll put it on the lowest difficulty just for the hell of it. Sleepwalk. Sleepwalk is, the ult like, the lowest difficulty. And they still attack as if I'm still on hard or anything like that. And I am not a fan of that. Like, granted, it's only it's only really a problem if you just play uh, with the CPU quick matches. But for whatever reason, they're just so damn hard. And I just don't even go sweet CPU anymore. It's like, man, how's this game going to turn me off from playing one of the one of the modes intended by the game? Uh, but yeah, well, yeah. But other than that, that other than that dumb crap right there, I enjoy Skullgirls a lot. This game is actually pretty fun. It looks amazing, and the music sounds great. Like, I'm not really a jazz kind of person myself. Like, I'm not really kind of jazzy, old-timey music. Like, I love music, and I will listen to any one, any song that grabs my attention. I'm not that kind of person who sticks to a certain genre. I was never that kind of guy, because I, I kind of find that kind of boring. If you just pick one genre of music and you stick to it, it's just not fun. You're like, well, well taste-wise. But, I don't know, this, the jazz setting is kind of cool. Uh... One thing I do like is the characters themselves. I mean, the Skullgirls, I mean, the fighting game wouldn't be a fighting game without the characters behind it. And the characters all look interesting in the wor weirdest ways possible. Like, it's the, it's because of, like, you know, them being, like, all monstrous and, like, there's hardly any normal characters in this game that I think is a good attraction to Skullgirls. Like, all the characters are literally crazy. There's, like, not a single, like, normal character in Skullgirls, like, at all. I mean, if you want to count Beowulf, okay. Like, can you even count Beowulf? I feel like he's the most normal of the characters because all the other characters are either some kind of monster or some kind of freakish humanoid abomination or both. I'm looking at you double. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, like it, it's always just, the characters just look so damn wacky, but they just, they're so cool. I think that's what makes them the coolest thing because they're all just insanely crazy. And the, uh, the hand-drawn art style kind of, it, it really does complement the one. I mean, I, I guess like the no, most normal character, I would say, is either Beowulf, I guess, or P Parasol. I mean, I, 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 the Parasol, I can at least count as the most normal of the cast. She doesn't look that crazy. She doesn't do anything all that wacky. She's, she, she simply looks like a woman with an umbrella. And she looks like Mitsuru, but that's beside the point. But anyway, yeah, she looks relatively normal compared to literally every single person in here, man. I mean, if you put freaking Parasol next to someone like, let's say, like, what, Painwheel? <laughs> the differences are staggering. 
or someone like Misfortune or someone like Squiggly, which actually I do like playing Squiggly. Squiggly is a very fun character to play as, though I kind of graduate, um, gra um, gravitated towards Eliza. I always gravitate towards Eliza because I like like some of her gameplay style, though I, though when she does that whole, you know, coming out of the skin move, like when you like, you know, pop out, pop out of your skin, like that's, that's hard to control. So I just like kind of turned me off of Eliza, but I went to Squiggly and she's actually pretty fun to play. Uh, I tried playing Miss Fortune, just didn't hit me all that much. I feel like Miss Fortune would have hit me better, but then, you know, her taking off her head has its own thing, and I'm like, ah, I can't do that. Like, the one thing about Skullgirls that kind of gets me is, like, there are actually very few characters that could actually, like, I actually feel like I want to play. I, I like playing the game, but, like, no one has grabbed me really but Squiggly. And I feel like she's, like, the easiest character I try to play. I try playing, um... I tried playing, uh, God, um, I just forgot her face, FS. Ophelia never, she, she feel like, she's like, she feel like the, you know, the main character. I usually gravitate towards the main character, seeing like the easiest play. I figured Ophelia would be the easiest one, but I guess not. I tried, I'm like, damn, I, I, I went through hours of messing with Ophelia. I just couldn't feel it. I haven't tried Fukua yet. Don't know how different she is from Ophelia. I haven't tried Beowulf. I haven't tried Robo Fortune. I haven't tried Double because Double freaks the hell out of me. I don't want to mess with her. I, I I don't even want to know what her gameplay style is like. Holy hell, I don't even want to know. Parasol didn't grab me as much. Uh, I tr I tried. Uh, could grab me as much. Couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, Valentine, oof, maybe. I don't know. I'll, I like Valentine design wise. I like all these characters design wise, especially Valentine. I think she's like she has my favorite design like in the entire game. The the, nur the 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 dark nurse thing is always cool, but just I got nothing. <laughs> I, I haven't really played her much to um to really gain like a big like oh I'll play this character because of this. But no, I really haven't gained like a big understanding of the character, so I can't really say much. Um, Sarah Bella, no, don't like her all that much. Uh, I haven't played Pain Will yet. I haven't played uh, Peacock, but. I mean, maybe someday. I don't know. She looks interesting as hell. I do like that whole old cartoony vibe about her, because like, I, I like those kind of things where like they get references in like media currently today. Like I like that kind of reference, like those really old timey cartoons or old timey things. I really like that, especially when it's on a cool character that kind of embodies all of that in the current day. I like that. It's like the cool. She's like the cool, one of the coolest characters I've seen in fighting games because it's just how ancient. She all the range and stuff she represents, uh, but uh, yeah, all the other characters. I even forgot Big Band. People love Big Band. I have yet to actually play Big Band. I thought about playing him for like memes sake once, and I just haven't picked the character up. One thing that just baffles me is like, it's just weird having two male characters in a game called Skullgirls. Like the game, the whole. I feel like the game's premise was just be like, oh, a game full of crazy female characters, and. I just feel like having two male characters kind of ruin it. I mean, I feel like if, they, if, they, if Big Ban and Beowulf were women, different story, though I don't know how Big Ban would, and Big Ban and Beowulf would work as women, but it just feels kind of weird. Like, the game is clearly Skullgirls, the character's about the girls, I mean, the story's about the girls, and it's just like, oh, well, you got these two characters, these two dude characters in here. It reminds me of something like freaking, if Arcana Heart had like a dude character randomly thrown in there. That was just kind of weird, you know? Like the game's like all female cast, like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that Beowulf and Big Ben are seriously cool guys. I, I know Big Ben's cool because everybody likes this guy. Don't know much about Beowulf though, but um, it's just, it's so weird. Just having two male characters in this game, but it ain't, it ain't the worst thing I've seen before. I mean, hell, there's like a, like, there's like the game Sinron Kagura, and they have like a dude character, though he's not really playable anymore, and now nah, it's just all female characters, so who knows? I kind of wish Skullgirls gets more, like, more stuff to do with it. I know Mike Z's still floating around. I know now Skullgirls is an Evo now, which is really cool. Um, and I know Skullgirls recently got an update that puts Sonic Fox in the game. Um, whatever your views on him, you know, I'm not the one to answer that. But um, it's kind of cool that someone made like actually it's like a, a re actual person, you know, made it into a video game. I, that's a dream I've always wanted. Like someone, like if I ever made like a really cool story and it became like really serious, 
and like famous enough. I would like it to appear in like other media, like a fighting game. I've always wanted to make a fighting game. I mean, I'm not very good at making mechanics of fighting games, but goddamn, I just want to see characters beat the shit out of each other. I want my creations to beat the hell out of each other, and I, I would love it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Scorpions has also had a lot of cool stages and art too. Like the game looks really, really good. Like if one thing that Skullgirls really excels at is the artistic direction. Like this game looks really good. Like I, I, I can barely play the game worth a damn. But goddamn, I keep coming back every time just for the art. Like the art style just looks captivating. It's like that. Like I, it's hard. It's hard to describe this time period because I'm not very good at. It, but it's like old timing. Also, I could say about it. it's old timing. Like more like. Like, uh, how do I describe it? I'm terrible at describing time, uh, like like war, like wars. I want to say, uh, but, but let's just let's just say screw that. Let's just say screw it and say I just like the, um, like the art style. I do like all the extra art they give you in the art gallery from guest artists. Like really, like uh, the fact that like you got people from like um, Under Knight who made this art, Toshimichi Mori, like different characters from like just everywhere making art. Hell, Justin, I, Justin, Justin Wong. Has guest art, and I didn't even know he drew. I didn't even know that dude drew. It's crazy. Like you learn something new every day. But yeah, like all this guest art is really cool. It just goes to show how much people like these characters. Like all this art actually made officially in the game is crazy. And look how small Skullgirl started out as. It started as a really small indie game. Look how, look how much of a following it has now, and the fact that it's made on multiple consoles. It's, I, it's, it's like a story I really like to hear. Like when someone starts out as small and they just gain like this big, um, big following because of fan interest and this big traction, I like hearing those kind of stories because sometimes they deserve it. Like these Skullgirls really does deserve it because the game is actually really good. Like I would say another thing I like with this game is goddamn Marie, dude. Okay, on top of the fact that Marie is a regular boss, like one thing I don't like in video games, of period, the fight games, period, are boss characters. Like, I don't even give a shit if they're toned down. Like, if they become playable or are seriously toned down for when you fight them as a boss, I'm cool with that. I'll be totally cool with that. But I, I, I understand why Marie couldn't have been a playable character, but I swear to God, I feel like she didn't have been a playable character. Like, don't, don't, don't look me in the face and tell me Marie couldn't have been a playable character somehow. I mean, I don't, I don't care how they did it, but Marie should have been a playable character. But that's, like, not the most major thing. The most major thing is that she's so damn hard. I will complain anytime when there's a really hard boss character in a fighting game. Like if a boss character is like, you know, fair but difficult, I can deal with that. God damn it, Marie. I can't beat her without like cheesing the character. I also can't beat her that way because I had tried before and I suck. Like best I can do is literally do enough damage on her and literally stay in the corner and wait till the time runs out. I have to time her out just to beat her. I've beat her multiple times before without timing her out, but I feel like timing out her is easier because I don't have to rush in and get my ass kicked by some unblockables or some low hits I can't block at the time. And then she has multiple phases too, and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it, dude. A fighting game character should not need multiple phases, man. But yeah, I, Marie, and then you got a mode on here, like Marie, what, 300? Wait, I forgot what percentage she was even called. Like, what What? what, what was it, 300, like 300%, 2000%, like 3000? No, it wasn't 3000%, I think that's like, I think I was exaggerating a bit. I don't know if it's Marie 500% or 300%. It's been so long since I remembered. Um, I haven't touched that boat in so long. I, I looked at that mode and I was like, bro, the hell? <laughs> oh, man. But no. Nah. No, 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 no Marie, man. I, I, I dread it every time I get closer because I'm like, ah, oh, great. She's the final boss of the arcade mode. Oh, no. She's the final boss of the story mode. Oh, no. I guess <laughs> run into her every damn time. And I'm like, okay. My clock is on 30. It's only one round. I'll just time around. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really don't have much to say on Skullgirls. I, I don't want to drag my videos out too long because I'm just starting to pad this up with filler and shit. But other than that, I would say that Skullgirls is a pretty damn good game. I would recommend it to anyone. I'm glad. I'm not happy it took me so long to get to Skullgirls, but I'm glad I got to it in the first place. It's literally better now than ever. And. I granted, I wish I could have bought it on my PS4. Can I, I had literally so many opportunities to do so. Just never did. Um, man. If I know if it went on sale right after I bought it on the Switch, I was like, damn, I could have just bought it on my PS4. Um, but hey, spur of the moment, fan. It's like, it's, like, it's like I keep buying this crap, man. Spur of the moment stuff. Um, but yeah. That is the end of me talking about Skullgirls. I will continue to play it because this game is fun as all hell. 
Like, I also like the color references too. I ain't gonna talk about the color references, but you know, considering I don't have much to say about the color references, other than I just, I like them. They're really cool. Um, tutorial's really good though, because it teaches a lot of stuff. I didn't talk much about the tutorial. I feel bad about not being able to do that because I'm still not even done with it. I, I barely scratched the surface. I ain't finished the beginning, the basics of the game. I had the game for like this since December, but I have hardly touched it since then. I've been distracted with other crap. I got like a bunch of other crap I gotta finish and you know, stories to write and things to actually do. Like it's just, I don't have that many things to do, but God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the end of Skullgirls. I think I'm out here, guys.